In this video, we're going to be going over Git integration in NeoVim. So as always, you can find all of the commands over here on my blog, as well as the configuration. Uh, you can also check out the, the development that I'm doing for this uh, NeoVim config over on my GitHub. Make sure to leave a star or fork it. That really uh, helps. I would appreciate it. All right, so let's go through some of the plugins that we're going to be using. So we're going to be using Signify, Fugitive, and Rhubarb. So I always want to say Signify for this, but it's Signify. And if you've ever used Git Gutter, then this is very similar to that. Fugitive is how we're going to be doing basically all of our basic Git commands. And these kind of just are on top of Fugitive as extra things we can do. Um, we're only going to be configuring one of these plugins, and that's going to be Signify. Make sure to source it in your init.vim. If you've been watching the old videos, then you know how I kind of set all this stuff up. Uh, so configuring Signify. Let's first go over what Signify does. So let's do nvim init.vim. And I made some changes here. So basically, you're going to see these squigglies for stuff that where I change things on lines. You're going to see a red dash for where I deleted things. And you're going to see pluses here. Uh, for where I've added stuff. And these are called hunks. So every single grouping of these that you see is called a hunk. So we can, and by default, you would see a number next to all the lines that we deleted. I actually turned that off because I found it a little bit distracting to just see all those numbers there. So what you can do also is you can, you could stage and unstage hunks and all that kind of good stuff, but I just don't, I don't know. I don't really use it for that. So what you could do is jump through them. If you want to jump through all your changes, I have it set up to be a uh, leader J. So you can do leader J, leader J, leader J. And then to go back, you can do leader K, leader K, and that'll take you back. So we can jump through hunks just like that, right? Um, the other thing you can do is, and these are some of the stuff that I have uh, configured for them. So show sign count is equal to zero. Um, show the text is equal to one. I think this is on by default, but you can turn it off and then you could set up highlights here instead if you just wanted a highlight in the gutter. I found that actually more distracting, so I just kind of like this. I think this is fine. Uh, these are the only real commands that I use with this plugin. You know, maybe in the future I'll add a few more to my workflow, but these are the ones that I use. So let's do signify, and then I'm just gonna put sign in here and I'm gonna press tab. And then these are all the things that I can do with Signify. The ones that I use are at the very bottom here. They are toggle and toggle highlight. So we'll do toggle. That got rid of everything. I'll just press up and get them back. And then we'll do sign if I, and then actually let's just jump to, I think it'll take me to the bottom. Yeah. Toggle the highlight. So the highlight just highlights all the changes that you made. So if you want it to be a little bit more obvious than just in the gutter, then you could do it like this. So now we'll turn that off. And that's really all I use this plugin for. You can stage hunks, you can stage by hunk or whatever. You can do a few other things with it. I think it has diffs and stuff, but I just, I don't know. I don't really use it for that. So um, Fugitive and Rhubarb. So Fugitive is going to be like the main driver behind what you do with Git, right? And then Rhubarb is going to unlock this command down here, which we'll kind of go over in a second. So all of your basic Git commands, and I'm not going to go over all of them here, but you know, if you type in Git, and then space, and then start pressing tab. Here's all the things that it kind of unlocks for you, right? So we can do git add. These these are kind of like, you know, the main three that you're going to be using, but git add, and then it's like normal. So if you wanted to add everything, you would just do like dot, right? Or git commit flag m, and then send your message, right? Or I think it'll open up a buffer where you'll send your message or something like that. But I just do it like that for the most part. And then you have, you, you know, your push, your pull. We'll, we can do like a diff. And what git diff will do is open up another window here uh, with all the changes. So you can see, like, you know, what did I do? Um, I deleted this line here. This was the kind of the change that I made up here at the top. I got rid of this line here and I added this. And that's why they look like changes, right? Because these lines already existed. So that's what these are here. I added that stuff in and I've removed this stuff. What did I do for this removal? Well, let's look down here. I got rid of this junk here and. Then what did I do for this addition? That's right there. So that's your diff. Um, it'll also look at other files. So this is another file. Um, where can I find the file name? You know, somewhere there will be the file name. And then let's see. So yeah, yeah, si signify. There you go. So I could probably make it bigger and a little bit easier to see. Um, but yeah, then you can see the changes in other files as well. So that'll be your diff. All right. And then you can do git log if you wanted to go through all that stuff, like your commits and stuff. Uh, git blame is pretty cool too. So uh, git blame. 
And you're probably familiar with Git Blame already, but you know if you're not, you can do this in NeoVim now. So you can go through all the people who have added this stuff. So these lines like weren't committed yet, but like who did this line right here, right? And you can press enter and you can see like, you know, everything here. So let's go back to here. Um, so that was blame. There's the diff split, but I think, um, I think diff split is done better in some other place, but we can do that really fast. We can do G diff split. And then this will just be all the diffs. So like you can go line by line, right? And see, so okay, this was changed and those were deleted. And this was added here. Like this is what used to be here, right? And then if you look down, you can see all that was deleted. So in the bottom here will be what we did. And in the top is what we had before. So let's go back. And I'm just pressing tab to go back essentially. Uh, let's close that. There we go. All right. Um, oh yeah, rhubarb was the next one that I kind of wanted to go over here. So hold up, let me uh, open this back up again. So now rhubarb is what unlocks this. I didn't really have to change anything or add anything. So we can do g browse, and it immediately opens this file up on GitHub. And I just think that's pretty useful. So. You know, I figured I would add that in. So you can just jump right to GitHub on, like, I don't know if you've ever been in a file and you're like, oh, okay, how does this look on Git? Or let me go see this repository on Git really fast. Well, you can just do gbrowse really fast and jump to Git. You don't have to like go search for it or anything. I think that's pretty useful and it helps me jump to GitHub really fast if I need to. Um, so let's jump back here. And then the last one is gonna be GV that I'm gonna go over. And GV is a git commit browser. So we'll do G. V. All right, and then these are all of the commits that we've made, right? And then like a little hash right here and all that kind of good stuff. So what we can do is, um, these are a few other options we can pass with it. So GV with, a, um, with an exclamation point will list only the commits that affect the current file. So this is actually listing all commits, right? So this is all the commits for this project. Um, Instead, we could just do the ones with the current file with the with the bang here, right? Uh, with the question mark, it will fills the location list with revisions of the current file. I don't find myself using this one that often. Um, then there's regular old GV, right? So let's go through some of the mappings here. So you can press O on one of these, and then we'll jump over to the window, and you can press like L to like go through all the folds here for the things that we've changed. And I think they're per different file. Let's see. Yeah, they're per different file. So you can see the different file names right here. So plug colorizer.lua, fugitive, FCF, all that kind of good stuff. So you can see all the changes that you made in this commit, right? And so that's pretty helpful. If you're trying to remember something that you did before and you wanna, you know, browse through your commits. Um, it gives you some other options too. Um, I'm not going to go over every single option because I think that's pretty much enough for somebody's workflow. Uh, we'll jump back over here and we'll close this out. All right, and you can check out all these repos here. I did not go over everything that these things can do, uh, what these plugins can do. I didn't go over everything. So, so like Signify has a lot more things you can do. Fugitive definitely has a lot more things you can do. Rhubarb is pretty much, you know, that's, that's what it was. And GV, there's definitely a little, you could dive a little bit further into that. Uh, so make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.